Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, now a couple of episodes ago, I showed you a standard linear uh, regulator circuit and how it wasn't that much different to LDOs and even um, switch mode uh, power supply regulators. Now, um, as it so happened, I've actually um, been playing around with just such a circuit recently. In, in fact, um, pretty much exactly this. I've been using a uh, TLC2252 op amp with an MJD112. In, in fact, this is an old um, circuit I've used, and it's just the same as a linear regulator. It's got the uh, op amp as the error amplifier. It's got the Darlington um, series pass transistor, and it's a very simple circuit and I touched on how uh, these uh, linear regulator circuits can actually be a bit unstable. In fact, the LDO version with the PNP pass transistor instead of the NPN is more um, unstable. It requires a certain minimum capacitance and a, or a certain capacitance in a certain range, a certain ESR value of the output capacitor in a certain range to be to have the loop actually stable. And it's the same thing with these linear, um, the standard NPN linear regulator too. They actually traditionally require a minimum output capacitance to keep the loop stable. And there's a whole bunch of theory involved in that with, you know, bode plots and doing phase uh, um, diagrams and, you know, um, uh, nulls and, and zip poles and zeros and things like that in the response. I won't go into that. But what happened is I've used this circuit before, no problems at all, right? But something happened when I decided to change it a little bit. Let's have a look. Now, here's the story of what uh, happened this morning. I've used this circuit before, as I said, and it's stable with hardly any output capacity, and it's worked really well. But what I wanted is I wanted to lower the cost. The TLC double two five two part is a little bit expensive, so I wanted to lower the cost there. And I also, instead of having a gain of one, because you can see it's just a standard um, follower circuit, I needed um, about a gain of four or something. So even though I had a spare op amp, because I was using a quad op amp chip this time, I had a spare op amp, I didn't want to do a times four gain on the input, so I thought I'd be smart and I'd change the TLC2252 to a much cheaper, more generic Jelly Bean um, LM324 uh, quad op amp, you know, it's it's pretty much the industry standard um, quad amp, op amp, it's not a bad device actually, it's internally frequency compensated and it's got, um, it works down to common mode range down to zero and it's, you know, it works up to high voltages, it's not a bad, um, you know, basic device at all. But instead of um, using that extra op amp I have to do a times gain of four here, I thought I'd be smart and just whack the times four gain in the in the uh, loop here in the linear regulator loop and that's a standard uh, standard technique you can do that too but wah, what happened no I built this thing up and it oscillated to buggery and it didn't matter how much um, output capacitance I put on there it was just horrible it it was just awful there was nothing I could do to stabilize this loop at all terrible epic fail and yeah, it serves me right. I was a little bit overconfident because I'd used the same circuit before and, you know, I thought, oh, I'll just use an LM324, pretty basic op amp, not much can go wrong there. And I'll just put the gain in there. And when you add all these things together, yep, Murphy's Law, you guessed it, steps in and ruins your day. And I was using reasonably high values in the feedback resistors here too, so I lowered those to change the pole response of the thing, and I still couldn't get the sucker stable. So um, I thought I'd experiment with some different um, chips and do a little bit of um, very quick um, simulation, and here's what happened. Okay, so I thought I'd just grab my LT Spice simulation package and see if I could at least uh, try and simulate what I was actually uh, getting in the circuit I physically built up. Now I didn't have an LM324 so I picked the nearest linear technologies equivalent which is the LT1014. In fact it's an LM324 replacement chip. It's like a high spec version of the LM324 so it's functionally equivalent so I thought that'd be near enough. Um, I've got a 15 volt power supply over here. I didn't have the exact uh, MJD 
double one two Darlington output transistor. So I thought I'd just um, uh, change um, simulate that with um, two two N double two double two industry standard NPN transistors. I know it's all quite a bit uh, dodgy, but I just wanted to see if I could get in the ballpark and at least get this thing to oscillate in uh, simulation mode. Now I've uh, got the gain of um, 3.7 it is actually with the 10k and the 27k feedback resistors here. I've got a nominal load here which is 10k and we can play with that uh, later and I've got um, a nominal output capacitance which I had in the circuit I built up which was 100 nanofarads. Now let's uh, run the simulation on that and try it. Here we go. We'll simulate it over to 0 to 10 milliseconds, shall we? Let's look at the output. The output's exactly what we expect. There it is, 370 millivolts, because we've got 0.1 volts input voltage times the gain of 3.7 is 370 millivolts. And it looks stable, at least for the first 10 milliseconds at least. So very stable. I'm quite happy with that. Now let's check the output here of the op-amp. The op-amp doesn't look to be oscillating at all. Once again, over the 10 millisecond period. So, you know, that's a bit of a bummer. So I thought I'd change the parameters of the circuit a bit by changing the output transistor here. Now let's pick a new one. Uh, for argument's sake, let's just get the FZT849. Um, it's not really critical what one it is. I just wanted to change the capacitance of the transistor, which will change the zeros and poles in the circuit and and it will just um, upset the loop st or change the loop stability of that circuit. So I've changed that transistor and let's run that simulation again. Bingo! Look, there's the output of the uh, op amp um, oscillating and that's pretty much exactly what I was seeing on my oscilloscope. It's quite amazing. Let's look at the output here. Bingo, there it is. The output is also oscillating and you switch that on at the switch both of them on and you can see that that sucker is completely oscillating. Now, if we change the, um, uh, let's see if we can make it stable by increasing the uh, output capacitance to one microfarad, shall we? Let's run it again. No, nah, it doesn't make it any more stable. It just changes the frequency of it there. Let's go up to 10 microfarads and let's run that again. And no, we're still not getting there. Uh, let's change it to 100 microfarads. And let's run the simulation again, see if it's stable. Now, it looks like it might be reasonably stable, but you can see um, that it starts, there's a little bit of something up there on the output of the op amp. Now, that's because we're only simulating from 0 to 10 milliseconds. Let's change the simulation time to, say, 100 milliseconds, and let's try that again, shall we? Bingo, there it is. There was the first 10 milliseconds. We couldn't really see anything, but as you can see after that, it's still doing the same oscillation. Now, the as you can see, the output um, voltage is actually, uh, the output voltage is a bit more, a lot more stable than it was before, okay? So that output capacitance is solving the problem. You know, that looks like a lot there, but as you can see, it's only 370 millivolts to 368. It's barely half a millivolt ripple okay or one yeah half a millivolt um you know ripple so it's not much at all so you can make that go away with the output capacitance but the fact is the op amp is still oscillating like that and that's horrible so that's not a solution at all so let's see what happens if we change the gain of the circuit shall we so let's change that 10k i won't delete it entirely i'll just change it to say 10 meg which will um, effectively make the gain of that um, well, better put in actual meg there, otherwise it won't work. Um, 10 meg, and that should change. Bingo! There, oh, there it is. It's still, um, it's still oscillating. It doesn't like that at all. Let's lower this capacitance right back down to 10 microfarads, and let's do it again. Oh, it's still there. One microfarad, and let's try it again. Nah, it's still going to oscillate regardless. Let's actually delete, physically delete um, that component and see if we can get that to... No, it doesn't like that at all. So even, let's change that to, say, 10 ohms. Let's try it again. No, that's not going to make a difference because there's not no parasitics there. That model's... Um, 
not that great. But as you can see, we actually made it do exactly the same um, simulation as pretty much what I measured. And I'll show a screenshot of what I actually measured and you'll see that the difference isn't much at all. And of course, if we change this back to the uh, 2N2222, you'll find that it will be, oh, no, there we go. The 2N2222 also oscillates way up in the region up there. Look at that. Wow. Let's change that to 100N. And yeah, it's much smaller. So we're actually getting this sucker to oscillate fairly well. Really quite amazing the difference in the simulation model and the loop response of just this basic um, NPN um, linear regulator when you change the output transistor which has various different characteristics. It really is quite amazing. Let's just do one more little experiment here because the MJD 112 Darlington transistor actually includes two on-die on resistors, uh, 8K and 120 in this case. Um, we'll add those to these, even though it's not an exact simulation. We'll just add them in and see if it changes the pole response. And um, as you can see, it, it, it does. It's made it stable. Let's um, change this output capacitance to, I don't know, something silly like 10 picofarads and have a look. No, it's still stable from 0 to 100 milliseconds. That looks really quite good. 100 microfarads, but you know, it, it's not really, um, this really isn't an exact um, simulation. It's, you know, it's probably not even close, but um, at least it does show you the uh, variability in changing um, the, you know, certain circuit parameters in just this uh, basic uh, linear voltage regulator loop like this. So you have to be really careful about what, um, you know, uh, to well, either simulate it extremely closely, but as everyone knows, simulation really um, can't cater for uh, the parasitic effects of your circuit when you actually build it on a PCB, parasitic capacitance and, and power supply and noise and all sorts of things like that. So um, really, it's, you know, it's quite, it's just fun and it's quite remarkable to actually just be able to simulate um, stuff like that, even using um, effectively different components and get a similar result. It's actually, you can't always get this, but I thought that was really quite neat and I thought I'd show it to you. So there you go. Just be careful when you're doing um, even simple loops like this. Um, look up things like the um, zero and pole uh, responses of um, closed loops like this and it's a really fascinating subject. It's really quite in-depth if you go into it, but uh, I highly recommend you check it out and just be careful next time when you're designing uh, even a simple circuit like this. So, what's the solution? Well, I've still got some experimenting to do, but I had some um, LP2902 quad op amps, which is almost identical to the LM324. In fact, they um, often share the same uh, data sheet, um, but it's just a, um, it's a slightly, it's got an extra current source in there, and I whack one of those in, and it made a hell of a difference. It's a hell of a lot more stable. All I need is a little bit more output capacitance, and it looks like a winner, and also, um, I decided to get rid of this times four gain out of the control loop here because that was just causing too much instability. So I had a spare um, op amp, so I'm going to do times four outside of the control loop and then adds a little bit of extra output output capacitance. Use the LP2902 instead of the LM324. They're about the same price. Um, in fact, they uh, might even be a little bit uh, cheaper and. Uh, you know, bingo! It should work a treat. I've still got some more experimenting to do, but there you go. That's just an interesting um, thing that I was doing this morning. I thought I'd share with you, and it just goes to show how much uh, difference slight uh, component changes can make in uh, in basically very simple control loops like this. And brands of chips can matter too. There's um, a big tip for you. If you change brands of chips, they can be slightly different. Change the parasitic, uh, you know, effect of your, um, of your control loop, the pole and the zeros might change slightly. And bingo, it can throw your whole thing out. So that's something to keep in mind next time you're designing even simple circuits like this. Control loops. You've got to know how to optimize them. And yes, there's a lot of theory and math 
involved in the whole thing and you can go through that but in the end it's easier just to build your circuit up because all that theory is not going to be right often it's just going to not take into account um, lots of parasitic effects and different brands of components and things like that so really uh, you've just got to build it up check it and optimize your circuit for the parts you're actually using so just be careful next time see ya